go over. But um. Oh, I was starting to say that it wasn't hiking in. That one? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, he is. This is the. That's the one that pulls out. Nobody thinks about the keyboard. That's right. UI. What do we do in first? So that's right. This particular keyboard. Well, I mean, I say it's been the three. Okay. Oh, it's all symbols. If you unplug it, it's a ladder. Four hours of the together. That's okay. Don't worry about that. Okay. You can record it like this, or you can do that, and it will do the shots that way. And you can just say, okay, let's get that done. So you don't have to have the thing out. Okay. Um, on the right, there's a green and red button. Press it. See that button right there? Yeah. Press it. Uh, it's recording now. Press it again. It stops recording now. Everything else is up here. This is zoom, like this is basically zoom in, <coughs> zoom out. You won't even do that. So you literally can just take this thing and be like, okay, now we do. How do I do this? How do I make this thing work? And then you just put it down, and leave it down the screen, and be like, so what? What is this thing doing? And then just record it. Well, press the red button, and you never press it again. Just keep walking around with the red button on. And of course, you can always just use the clip there and here to pull it right out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
to see what happened. They were partying. I had no idea what chance was going to pick up. I wanted to have everything I might possibly need. Exactly. Including far more books than I should have brought. Right. So I can easily squeeze four, four or six boxes into this car. Absolutely. Yeah. You're the first one with the hard drive seat here. Oh, yeah. Besides me. It's going to have a hard drive. I would assume it's a hard drive, not a... Oh, it's, a, it's a SCSI. It's a, it's a uh, SCSI SP. So, ram fast, SCSI controller, two hardware enclosure, which I used to have. I upgraded hardware several times, but I just got a SCSI disk SD. Now it's a micro SD card. It's 4 gigs or something. And a pseudo SLC. So it won't uh, burn out quite so fast. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, if you can't be well, honest, I the archive doesn't want it. I probably don't want it. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can I'll carry everything I got this year in my arms. Where he is. Everything. Yeah. But I let everybody else get home and take your stuff. I have too many of those. I have I've tried tried but then I don't uh, don't go into those as much. Okay. Okay. Mostly they're the password problem. Okay. 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 Hey! Nobody died. Oh, I tried to prepare it. If it's not, like there's a green monitor. Yeah, there should be some good fishing. Just give it a little look. They are. And she doesn't work with anything else. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to get the top scan line. You can get your border space and the scan line. You can lower it out. One of the guys wrote, I didn't see it until now. Rip stream during the day. Yeah, you're not going to be able to get the top scan line. You can get your border space and the scan line. You can lower it out. One of the guys wrote, Rip stream during the day. Yeah, those I saved all of them. I saved okay. all my TPS numbers. I got some. Okay. 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 Okay.
here and do that. No, the same with the other ones. They've been Power playing Power major championships okay. for 157 yeah, years. This is the 441st, okay. and there's never been a 62. Ah. So. Well, I say records are meant to be broken, right? That's exactly it. I think this one's shotgun. I can imagine the players on the golf course who want attention out of it. Oh, sure. But on television, I've been two more exciting than you ever had. Some bags back there. They were tweeting. Cotton gloves are no longer considered one of the standard parts of the same or the appropriate methodology. I'm sure you're going to get right on that. What this is this? Just cold washed hands? Clean, dry hands that are free from creams or lotions are preferable in the majority of circumstances because cotton gloves reduce manual dex dexterity, which means you can grab at the items, and the cotton fibers may push pigment off the page. Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought it was something you could probably make this. Well, it's just the it's not. But you seem like you'd want to be careful of handling it on something. But apparently, they will wear gloves in specific cases like lead seals or touching the surface of a globe. Yeah, and it's just the manufacturer. I label them. I just. It's really just a I just love archivists. I am not a beloved archivist in some circles, so I'm always fascinated by watching their little fights over nothing. You're, you're an archivist and a technologist. Study the archivist. I can it's in itself. Only in the realm of like, I'm more like the Bill Nye of archivists. Right. People are like, he sure gets a lot of attention. So, so. Although I think Neil deGrasse is now getting like that reputation now. Science is in when he's not needed. <laughs> gets a lot of attention from the fathers people. Let me know, give me a little warning when you think you're going to start to get to this. Oh, I do need to get my video up because that's one thing I'm not exactly sure what the right sequence of magic adapters here is that I'm going to need. Well, you mean like the video of your uh, So for the presentation, the slide deck is not. Oh. oh, and actually, I haven't tried. I haven't tried the jet here either. Uh, this is a complete work of walk So there's multiple 
methodologies so, at play yeah, here. Yeah, I've got a, I think I've got a uh, HDMI is an option, or HDMI it up. Or I can do a display port. Ideally, just, I mean, I think the HDMI, I think we have a cable for that. We should yeah, have a cable. There seems to be lots of cables. Yeah, the HDMI is the white one up there. I used it. Yeah, here it is. So, on your side, it's crossing oh, around there. On the door, very conveniently located next to the computer. That's a lot of notes, buddy. Yes, yeah, for the record. No, that's a I'm lot. I'm gonna have to. It's gonna be a bit of a marker. I got. I got ground to cover. Uh, <coughs> do you want to know how much notes I have for my talk? I, I don't think you're really a note guy. No, I'm not a note guy. Yeah, it doesn't feel. My notes were the slides. My notes were when I see the picture. I know it's time to start talking in that direction. And then once in a while, I put a challenge to myself. And I go like, and I have to also have the note that the note is the next three slides. Like I'll say, and then this is happening, and I'll switch on it. But I have to know that like, what you'll notice is that it's harder for me to do something where I go, and how many of this was there? Answer slide. Like I don't tend to do that because I won't remember. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah, so my strategy is more uh, slides double as uh, technical reference yeah. uh, for later, so uh, for people who don't watch. Oh, sure, for that bit, yeah. yeah. When I publish my slides, it's like, here's a bunch of disparate pictures. <laughs> <laughs> right. here's, a picture, yeah. here's a picture of squeezed out toothpaste and then a floppy disk. Yeah, you really want the audio you know, to go with this. Yeah, yeah, otherwise, you're that is interesting, yeah. otherwise, you're super sick. Uh, that's not for everybody. Not for everybody. Yes. One people, size fits one. People, 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 now, people walking into a room with no notes. So for some people, that is literally the scariest. Like, I don't mind. It? I just don't think I could, if I could get through with the stuff with mine. Like Seinfeld's joke of people being more scared of uh, public speaking than death, yep. which was a thing. And he says that means that at a funeral, you'd rather be in the box than in the original. But probably the guy giving the eulogy is not the guy. Who's, but who knows? It would be different than if you're standing there to give the eulogy than to open the box, lie down, and say goodbye. Uh, close it. Exactly. It's going out your, your way, I guess. Yeah. That's actually what's that song I did on my way. We've got 10 people watching externally right now. Camera. Camera's over there. Um, he's going to switch over there, and then I'm going to open it up. Um, this is stuff as dense as shit. Um, hmm. My two favorite, actually, I, I have multiple cheer up. My first cheer up is is uh, is Chelsea Nine. Manning's Twitter. That's the greatest thing ever. No, that's not clever enough. Because people are just writing all this hate shit. Right. Each time Chelsea was like, <laughs> I, that, I, I push the. Um, like, You're off. I got this. Yeah. Uh, that's well, what I do first. The other one is something yeah, called Gourmet Hot Cakes, yeah. Yeah. which yeah. is yeah. proud to yeah. donate from yeah. 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 people doing hot yeah. cakes that are horrifying. Yeah, they're just like these. You'll see what people come up with, but they're like, like the clip of the leader, whoever was it, just killed himself. Um, uh, I already forgot the name. It's the it's, uh, it's not Lynn Biscuit. It's another one. Oh, yeah. just just try this one. Yeah. And um, see if we got this one. It's somebody going like, like, well, of course, because if you look at their stuff, it's all Jewish lyrics. Self loathing would lead to suicide. At least, and it'll be a, it'll be like a screenshot of this thing. So it's always like it keeps you. Oh, it's the same person I was talking about. It keeps me very uh, balanced to go into it. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's the whole the whole time. Time. So yeah, gourmet hot takes yeah. always fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So you've already put the sword. You're not comfortable to put in your arm in your hand. I have a second GS yes. Oh, that's true. Now we're talking about these two things. It sounds like our knowledge on that is true. I have to take those back and dark water with the snow on the John, I'm recording both. Start when they tell you to start. So we're going. Tomorrow is the start of the trip. Uh, uh, so uh, the way. Okay. In the Dallas to DPS state sightseeing around there. Because I was there, and I arrived on Thursday night, so Friday was basically being an appointment. Yes, the road trip up. Test, test. The main free Kansas Post. Testing, that's it. So it's not okay? Is it too bad? Small portion of the, uh, the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> 
Welcome back, everybody, from uh, lunch. Hope you enjoyed your lunch and are now uh, mentally rested. John Brooks is going to tell you uh, about lots of neat Protoss stuff now and future now. Take it away. All right. Thank you. Maybe it will, and maybe it won't. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's not the one. Okay. All right, so Prodos, it's 2017. Uh, recent changes and future improvements. So, um, first, uh, um, who am I? So, uh, John Brooks, uh, President and CTO of Blue Shift, uh, which I founded in 1995, lifelong programmer, worked on about 100 games, uh, mostly do low-level graphics engines, optimization, uh, embedded systems, that kind of thing. Um, started on 2 plus in 79, uh, largely self-taught, was with my friend and tutor um, from afar, and um, created the 2GS3200 color mode in 88, uh, did several games on the Apple II, and then just kept going, doing lots of other things. I returned to Apple II hardware development in 2015 when my son was six. Um, and the question I get is Prodos, what and why? Uh, so when I released the new Prodos, uh, it just didn't make sense to a lot of people. But of course, we all know uh, Apple II is 40 now, Prodos is 34, but still there's new Apple II products. Uh, the disk archives, the peripherals, the emulators, games and software, all the cards that people are working on and talking about, um, and then new users learning and playing with the Apple II, new kids doing it as well, uh, new interest in the history and legacy of the machine, and a majority of the Apple II programs in use are ProDOS. Um, and of course, Waz designed the Apple II to be ultra modifiable, and so I think that was a challenge. <laughs> That's modifying. Yeah. Um, so uh, the state of ProDOS in mid-2016, when I started uh, Kind of getting back into the Apple II development environment. Um, so, <clears throat> as of like, last year, there were two versions of Prodos required if you were uh, making software. So, you either needed 1.9, which came out in 1990 and worked on all of the CPUs, all the Apple IIs, um, or 2.03 from 93, which required a CO2 
which meant that it had to be a 2C or an enhanced 2E or AGS. Uh, you needed 1.9 to boot on all Apple IIs, and 203 you needed for bug fixes and smart port and CFFAs with multiple drives and SCSI and lots of good things. So if you made a new program, you were uh, torn between which of these you want to use. Uh, anyway, so uh, a former MECC software developer, Roger Shimada, made a dual boot, dual boot utility as a way to try to uh, make this less painful. But then you needed two versions of ProDOS, and you needed the boot utility on your five and a quarter, and then you didn't have much space left for the thing you were actually trying to deliver. So that wasn't so good. So uh, on Usenet, we had a big discussion, and I you know, I guess I somewhat volunteered because I said, I think we should just fix ProDOS. How hard could that be? <laughs> um, so then it was off to try to fix ProDOS. So the first step was create a memory map because uh, 6502 takes more space than CO2, which is why Apple did this in the first place. Uh, they ran out of space in ProDOS. So I estimated that the 6502 code would add about 200 bytes. Uh, so we just got to find 200 bytes and we can no longer be fractured into two different camps of ProDOS. So I uh, took a system death function, which probably almost no one has ever seen. It only happens if uh, there's a bug in ProDOS, so I'm sure Apple saw it a lot when they were developing it, uh, or it happens if there is a interrupt that there's no interrupt handler for, which again, most people don't have a lot of that going on in their Apple IIs. So a, if one of the, those two events happens, a little box comes up in the middle of your text screen and says system error you know, with a number. But again, a bunch of code almost never gets used, but it gets loaded every time you run anything on your Apple II. So that's always nice. And um, so I moved that out to language card two so I could be 65CO2 ProDOS and make it work everywhere. So uh, I did that. I replaced the CO2 code with 6502 code. I fixed the flashing period that was happening in the splash screen uh, if you didn't have an ACOM card. Um, and I converted text uppercase because the 2 and 2 bus, of course, didn't have any lowercase. Uh, and then it came time to be testing, and I realized that the quit program was, that was in ProDOS 2 was different than 1.9. It was not going to work. That's the buy program, and it was done by Alan Bird. Uh, it was very cool. It was 80 columns, used mouse text, uh, nice little UI, which is a lot better than type slash your path name and then type your file name, which was the alternative. So then the buy had to get fixed. Um, yeah, so this is the buy problem. Um, so there were, so I did a survey of the different buy programs that are out there, and there are a ton. There's program selectors everywhere. It's kind of a fun little utility that many people like to write. Uh, so I started trying to find the ideal replacement to solve this problem. I just needed a program selector that would, that would uh, work on all machines, and um, also would be reasonable in the modern era of a CFFA card or a other large storage device where you could have more than 10 files, you know, uh, on your on your drive. And what I found is that they pretty pretty much either limit the amount of files that they will show because uh, they either have some hard-coded buffer size or they have a UI which is in columns or something where there's, you know, they can only show 80 files and they stop. Uh, so there was lots of undesirable behaviors in these other programs and they were kind of hard to modify because they were just binary. Um, Anyway, so yeah, the good, the good ones were 80 columns or more than 300 bytes, which is all the space that ProDOS has for the program selector that comes up when you type buy from basic. Uh, and 300 bytes is painfully small. So a, um, a nice 40 column screen over here, you know, uh, not that large, 40 by 24 columns, um, 300 hex bytes is uh, three quarters of that size. So if you type 18 lines of 40 columns, that's how big the program is. Um, so everything has to fit in there. Uh, so that's not much. Um, so uh, uh, basically the answer was clean, clean sheet of paper, do a rewrite, uh, and this is kind of the end result. It's a 40 column program, which means it will run all the Apple IIs, 6502 code. Uh, it supports 2,700 files uh, per directory, which basically means that it doesn't do anything with the 48K other than store the files. Uh, and um, and I don't, well, I never tested that. I really don't recommend anyone else test it either because uh, ProDOS is a linked list. So that's going to take a long time to load that directory. But, uh, you know, it should work better than the alternatives, uh, alternative selectors. Um, 
tab or the one through seven keys, select the slot and drive. Arrows and A through Z will select the file name. Uh, it'll display the slot and drive and prefix when you're drilling down into directories. Uh, and it will display all the files, not just the ones you can launch. So most of the other selected programs, you only saw system files or directories. And sometimes it's hard to think of where you were in the directory structure because so much stuff is being filtered out. Um, it got squeezed into 300 bytes via many rounds of optimizing. And then I phoned a friend and asked Peter to help out. And he made several rounds and he threw it back to me. And we played, uh, we played code golf for about two weeks. Uh, he would get to the end of his rope and then I'd change direction and then I'd get to the end of my rope and he would pick it up again. And uh, it, was, it was quite the marathon there for a while. Um, so let me uh, show you, let me do a quick demo just for people who haven't seen. Uh, I've uh, seen this running. Or maybe not. Hello. Oops, there it goes. <clears throat> okay, so. Um, all right, so we'll boot the floppy. So it boots up 16th of August, 2016. Um, and um, so here it is. You get the little menu section program, um, up and down arrows. Well, you scroll. Tab works the way the old uh, bird's buy would work. We just cycle through the drives one at a time. But in addition, you can just hit a number and say, I want to go back to slot seven, or I'd like to go back to slot five. And, uh, um, and if you hit the same slot a second time, it will toggle to the second drive. So you can just toggle back and forth. Uh, so any of your seven slots, two drives per slot, kind of the way, uh, it's, you know, basically what for us will support. Um, and then any of the dashes are showing system files that it will execute. Um, B or basic programs, the slashes or directories. Uh, and so you can just go in and see what you can run. And run programs or escape to back, back up. And uh, it's pretty mean, mean and fast because it's only got 18 rows of 40 column text. There's not a lot of not a lot of uh, opportunity to go slow here, frankly. Um, so you, you do buy and you're back in it. And, uh, oh, and another kind of key thing. So if you want to get to, uh, say, the utilities, right, which is down their ways, you can just hit, uh, hit you and you're at utilities. So you don't have to scroll around for hours. And if you get hundreds of files in a directory, uh, you know, the whole scrolling menu thing gets old pretty fast. So anyway, yeah, that's um, that's kind of what Bitsy Bio is about. Um, yeah, so um, so that was all good, um, and I was ready to start testing. And the first feedback I got was, "Hey, you really can't put anything in the second bank of the language card uh, because there's lots of programs out there. Many of them really need every byte they can get, and they're already using that memory." Hmm. Um, and I said, well, that's fair enough. Um, so uh, I guess the solution was to find bytes. So let's optimize Protoss, uh, optimize Bitsy by some more, phone my good friend who I know can help whenever bytes need to be saved, uh, and off we go again. Um, but ultimately, it turned out that uh, really there was just too many bytes that had to be saved. Something else had to go. And Protoss has this thing called a device control block. Um, and there are eight of them. And they record the name of the volume and the size of the volume of up to eight, you know, uh, open files. So for us, it's limited to eight files open at once, and those eight files could each be on their own hard drive. And if they were, then for us, we'd have to keep track of eight separate hard drive names and sizes. In practice, I don't think anyone ever does that, uh, and it took a lot of memory to hold eight of these device control blocks. So I cut it in half. Um, so now Protoss 2.4 has four device control blocks. So you could up, open up four files at once, pulling data from four separate files willy-nilly on four different devices. Uh, the next four you open should also be on those same four devices if you ever want to open a file for some unusual reason. Um, so this has never come up uh, in practice by any users. Uh, I think it would be awfully difficult. I mean, you'd have to probably try hard to open eight files at once on eight different devices. Um, so in practice, so this seems like it's been a fairly uh, um, low impact modification and allows us to, us to squeeze everything in. 
Uh, so that was the way to solve the memory problem. Um, okay, so now that's good, but um, some people around here like to boot a lot. Um, they, they boot disks over and over as they trace through things and who knows what else. And so uh, I thought, uh, well, in addition to running programs, the other thing you want to do is to be able to, um, you know, basically say, oh, I'm done with this version of ProDOS, let's boot DOS 3.3 or whatever. Because a quit program isn't going to help you if you're changing from one operating system to another. Or to Pascal, whatever. So, um, so there's Bitsy Boot, and I'll show you that real quick. So back to slot six. Here's Bitsy Boot. So, uh, unfortunately, I'm on an emulator, which is showing that I have cards and drives in every single slot. But normally, there would be periods here for any slots with no with no drive in them. Um, anyway, and so you just basically pick a number one through seven, and it boots that slot for you. Um, you can also just decide you don't want to reboot, and, put, and you can go back to Protoss. Or there's this option, Open Apple Quit, um, which will take you to GSOS, uh, and that's that's kind of a cool thing. Uh, make sure maybe I'll try to demo that uh, real fast. Let's see. Actually, should we just uh, yeah? Well, we'll just do this. Um, all right, so we're going to go into GSOS, and then uh, we're going to go back, back to basic, and we're going to go boot uh, some game on DOS or ProDOS or whatever. So we'll, we'll boot a floppy. In this case, it's the system disk again, so it's not that exciting. But all right, so we're here messing around uh, in, in uh, ProDOS 8, and we're doing a Hello World, you know, or something. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's going to work out well. Uh, and then... Um, Anyway, and then we get a crash, so we have to reboot the hard drive, and then we have to reboot our floppy again, and we're doing some booting, and we decide, okay, we've done all of our 8-bit stuff we want to do. Now let's really go back to the finder and do some stuff there. So we go to Bitsy Boot, and we say open Apple Quit, and boom, we're back in GSOS. It's been dormant the whole time, because um, GSOS is in high memory, all DOS 3.3 and ProDOS, everything out is in low memory, and so you can reboot it many times. Uh, and I find this helps my workflow quite a bit, being able to quickly toggle back and forth between GSOS and uh, ProDOS 8 because launching GSOS is a time-consuming operation, uh, particularly on a, on a real machine. So that has been a handy thing for me. Um, so yeah, so Bitsy Boot is tiny, 365 bytes on disk, or 365 bytes in one block on disk. Uh, and you can get back to GSOS. Um, okay, so more on Bitsy Buy. Um, now, when you when you run Protoss 2.4 or 2.41, if you hold down the Option key, uh, it will always set up Bitsy Buy as the Quit program. Uh, normally, when Protoss 8 launches, it says, "Hey, have I just been launched by GSOS Finder?" Because if I have, then whenever an 8-bit app quits, we're going back to the Finder. Um, but sometimes that's not what you want. You want to stay in Apit land and play, play there for a while. So if you're holding down the, the closed Apple or option key, um, when you run ProDOS, it will uh, use Bitsy Buy for the rest of that session. And you'll need to go to Bitsy Boot with the open Apple quit when you are ready to return back to the finder. Um, yeah, so this is all the stuff I kind of showed before. Um, yeah, and uh, Bitsy Buy will, uh, will directly run any system file any non-system file, it looks for basic.system in the root of your of the drive that contains the file you're launching, and it asks basic.system to run the file for you. Because if you're running a basic program, uh, Bitsy is not really set for that. Um, you need the, the basic.system interpreter. Um, if you're going to execute a text file with a bunch of commands, that you need basic for all that stuff. So, um, but one of the things I did do is I created uh, a basic.system option. Um, and so what? So my my vision for basic basis on system, or what I thought might be useful, is that this could be a uh, a gateway when you want to launch your programs. Um, I haven't done much with this yet, uh, but it's in Protoss and it can be used by the community if someone wants to uh, experiment. Um, so if, uh, as you know, when you when you boot Protoss, it looks for the very first system file and runs that. Um, normally people make basis.system and they make a startup. Um, but anyway, if, if basis.system is your first file, that will get run. And it can tell that it got run from Bitsy Buy, and it can then just quit going back to Bitsy Buy. So on boot, you can have a very fast, hello, 
user, what do you want to do? Um, or you could have um, the first boot do whatever you want. Um, run a special application, look for a key press, whatever. Um, and then also, basis.system will get called whenever a non-system file is selected uh, in the menu. And so one thing <coughs> I thought would be useful that the Apple II is kind of missing this is the ability to map a file type and an auxiliary type to an application you would like to run. So um, if you, you know, launch an AppleWorks file, please run AppleWorks. If, you know, if you select um, a Cayenne Pascal source file, please launch Cayenne Pascal, whatever, right? So uh, there, there's a mechanism here where if someone gets to it, we could kind of have uh, association between file types and applications which can manage those file types. Um, anyway, so uh, whenever you select a file that isn't a system file, bc by first will look for basis.system in the root of the drive. If it finds it, will run that. If it doesn't find basis, then it runs basic. Uh, and of course, with uh, only 300 hex bytes, it was nice that there was only one letter difference, and that was no accident. Um, so what is on the 2.4 system disk? So um, I've got basic system 1.6, uh, one version, one minor version increment over 1.5, which is on 203. And all it does is it fixes basic so that when it when basic is run on an old integer <coughs> Apple II, and it says, hey, I'm an AppleSoft basic on the system, and there's no AppleSoft in this ROM, it used to just hang. It would just branch to itself. It would put up a morning saying this isn't going to work, and it would just die and kill the whole machine. Um, so 1.6 puts up the message saying not going to work, and then it quits back to Protoss so that you can do something else. Um, quit dot system is just a fast way to get into Bitsy by on a boot. So it just brings up the menu, basically. Um, basis dot uh, system would do that as well. Um, Coffee two plus because DOS and Protoss are the major operating systems, different format, file formats, it's nice to be able to copy stuff back and forth, uh, and having a reasonable UI. Uh, I was ever a huge fan of Apple's uh, Utilities of you know, Apple Works nested uh, menu options to do file operations, but each their own. Uh, put ADT Pro on there because getting our data off of our disks and onto modern machines for backup and usage is uh, a good thing, hopefully useful. Uh, then there's a utility I put on there called Make No P8, which is horribly unintuitive. I apologize for that. But what it does is it removes that GSOS put back to the finder code, which will save two blocks of about a K of memory. So if you're trying to squeeze a bunch of stuff onto a five and a quarter floppy, you know, having an extra K could be a helpful thing. Uh, and then there's a little read, read, uh, readme viewer to see some notes. Um, uh, let's see. Um, um, and then for the 2E, the CO2 processor, 2E or later, there's Cat Doctor from Regions Procell, uh, Unshrink, Mr. Fixit, and FastDisk. All getting useful stuff uh, for, I think, you know, modern users. Uh, then there's also Mini Days, Mini Basic. Uh, this is a tiny program in one disk block, which you can put copy into the root as either basis.system or basic.system, and it does a couple interesting things. One is if you got those big single load binary files, which won't load normally, because loading into thousand is not enough memory for them. This will load binary files that start at 800 and go all the way to B8FF. So if you replace basic.system with this, then you have a whole disk full of massive one, you know, single load binary files. Uh, it will load them where basic.system will say out of memory and just fail, and then you normally need a separate loader. So this is kind of a way to avoid the whole separate loader. It takes one block, Bitsy by is built into Protoss, Protoss can get down to you know 34 blocks. It's, it's all, it's, so this is a way of making some pretty efficient compilation disks if people choose to. Um, it can also run large basic files. Because there is no basic.system, instead of your high man being at 9600, it's more like B, you know, B800 or something. It's much higher. So you can load bigger programs and have more variables. But it's not all basic. It doesn't have all the commands. It's just an ampersand uh, micro file system uh, thing. Anyway, so if you run a big basic program, um, well, okay. So, uh, so many baz when it launches, if it doesn't see any uh, any program being passed from Bitsy by, it just quits. So on boot, you get a menu. Um, it can't handle executing text files or launching GSOS S16 files, which basically that system can handle because um, it's really tiny. Um, but um, 
But what it can do is that if you run a basic program and it stops or you're tired of it, you can hit ampersand and it will quit out. So that's what MiniBaz does. Um, so then there was 241. Uh, 241 was just a pretty much clean up and responding to some requests from the community. Um, and uh, one was adding support for some of the Apple II compatibles, which weren't quite as compatible as the other compatibles, which worked with 2.4. Um, and so that's those there. And then also there's a couple of minor Bitsy Vive bugs. Um, and then I also released 241 via System Disk 44 for people who like Apple's, um, you know, uh, file utilities. Okay, so that's pretty much it on uh, on Protoss current. So now we talk about what else could we do with Protoss beyond this. Um, so I'm, I've been working for I don't know, probably six months on improvements, further improvements to Protoss. Um, it's likely, it likely will be called Protoss 2.5. I initially thought it was maybe going to be 2.4.2, but you know, pulling the thread on the sweater, more things keep coming in. I think it's kind of probably beyond the scope of a, a ultra minor update. Um, but anyway, but the, so for the tiny things, uh, there's still a couple of Bitsy Buy bugs uh, that affect purple cards that I didn't have or are not super common. So the 2E card needs a patch. Um, uh, and um, actually, that's this, this comment is, is for here. So, uh, and then the workstation card for Apple Share on Apple IIs, um, you know, it didn't work. And so, got to fix those two things. Um, there's been lots of new activity in the Apple II community. So, there's more utilities we could put on. There's a new MVP Pro. Um, I should probably update Top Q Plus because we're using a pretty ancient version that I distributed last time. It was the only one that would work on an integer Apple II. Uh, for some reason, Protoss or Top Q Plus after 7.2 uh, stopped working on integer. Um, if anyone wants to figure out why that is, I'd be curious. Uh, there's a new cool uh, project called DOP, or DOS on Protoss. Um, I haven't really played with it much, but just read about it on the, uh, the Usenet. Um, but it uh, it patches, the R it replaces the RWTS with DOS, um, so that when DOS tries to do file operations, it instead calls Protoss. And so you can have Protoss, so that's actually a container for DOS, and run your DOS games on your Protoss devices. So that was pretty interesting. Um, there's a bunch of Apple Share utilities from Michael Guidero. Uh He's also the guy that found and fixed this. Michael's also the guy that's been doing the ROM 4X, 5X thing for the Apple 2C and 2C Plus. Um, he's, he's a big Apple Share guy, so he caught this issue. And uh, he's off fixing other uh, languishing Apple Share things. So if you're an Apple Share enthusiast, um, you might want to get on Usenet, or, you know, the, the CSA 2, Apple 2. Um, and we can talk about improvements. Uh, and also, we'd like to release three and a half inch disk image uh, instead of just the five and quarters for uh, all the people with GSs out there and two C pluses. Um, okay, so uh, next change um, is in increasing the number of files in the root directory. Forever and ever, we've only been able to have 51 files in the root, but everybody loves to put things in the root directory. It's the most convenient place to put things. Then we hit 51, and you know, it, all things break, and we have to figure out what we're going to do and delete and move around. Uh, anyway, so um, so uh, I've got a patch for 2.4 and 2.4.1, which auto expands the root directory size, just like a subdirectory. You know, if you create a subdirectory and you keep adding files, it just keeps growing. Uh, but there's an explicit check in for the root directory, which says once you hit 51, no more. Um, so they did that because the five and a quarter uh, bootstrapping code you know, isn't really prepared to go seeking all over the disk and loading everything out of the sun. Um, so be warned that when I make this change, if you're on a five and a quarter floppy and you decide to put Protoss at the very end of a really long root directory, it may not boot. So the the the, uh, the wise choice is to put Protoss in one of the first 51 files uh, if you're going to be on a floppy disk. Uh, but anyway, the other thing is that we also don't need to have so right now, whenever you format a drive, it creates 51 files in the root directory using four blocks of disk space, even if you're only going to put one file that's massive to use all the space. <clears throat> so we're basically kind of wasting three blocks to hold 51 files if you don't need more than 12. Um, so this is a way that we could free up more space on floppy disks and whatever in the future if we care to. Um, all right, next one is no slot, no slot clock. Um, never had one of these. Uh, when I had a, an Apple II, uh, I, I pretty much moved to the GS before I got much into clocks. But this seems to be the way to go for a lot of the community. Uh, pretty convenient. 
and uh, really popular. And so I'm like, well, it seems kind of a bummer to every time you get a disk having to copy clock.system or whatever, NS.system onto that disk in order to have a working clock. So why don't we put it into Protoss? Um, and then also the Manila gear, gear guys were like, hey, what, can't we put this on a 2 and 2 plus? Because right now it only kind of works on a 2E, 2C and stuff. So I ended up making, kind of rewriting the no slot clock driver, made three different configurations. Uh, one that works on the ROMs slots, or any of the, any of the uh, you know, D03 F8 ROMs on the motherboard. Uh, the other one, which is kind of the conventional version the NS system uses, where the CD or EF ROMs can be used with a no-stop clock. Uh, and then I also made it work with the uh, 2C D clock, which is actually, which looks like a slinky memory card in slot four at a specific address. So if you have a Chewy with a slinky memory, you could use that too. Anyway, uh, it's optimized to skip right over milliseconds and seconds, since Protoss doesn't use that, which saves about two-thirds of the read time. So it reads a little faster. Uh, and it only installs if no other clock is found, which is pretty much just a thunder clock. So if you've got a thunder clock, it will use that instead of this, because uh, this is kind of a slow thing to read. Um, the next one is uh, expanded auxiliary memory. So um, I've got a new placement for the venerable RAM driver uh, that we know and probably don't love that much. Um, and so it will recognize up to a 16 megabytes of RAMWorks RAM. And it creates the normal slash RAM in AUGS bank zero, because by convention, applications are supposed to look for that if they want to use auxiliary memory and then disconnect it and take over AUGS memory. Uh, but then it also makes a RAM three, kind of like a RAM factor would or something else, uh, for the rest of the memory in the RAMWorks card. Uh, and it makes 63.5K of the 64K of each bank available for data storage. The other half K is for the driver data that has to manage the stuff. Anyway, it's um, a little faster than the other auxiliary drivers, mostly Breeden's one from Procell, and there's uh, the Applied Engineering one for RAM Factor. Uh, it's got unrolled loops for reads and writes, and um, there is a problem with auxiliary memory, with, which is if you want to read from auxiliary language card and write to the main language card, there's no real configuration settings will do that. So I, um, I buffer it through registers and flip back and forth, rather than what, uh, what um, the Apple slash RAM driver does and all the other drivers do is any block that's in RAM card in the, in the language card, they copy the whole 512 bytes. Actually, they swap the 512 bytes with main memory. Then they copy it out and then they swap it back. So it's actually a three copy slow process. Um, so it's a little faster, but probably not going to matter much. Uh, a couple of caveats is that the auxiliary banks must be contiguous starting you know, at zero. Uh, some of the RAM works cards, like the three meg one, the first one and a half megs would be contiguous banks, and then there'd be like little banks scattered here and there. Uh, so only the first one and a half megs will be recognized by this driver. Um, the other caveat is that the Apple slash ROM slash RAM driver used to let you say that the very first 8K that you store into slash RAM will magically be placed onto double high res to be that specific half of the double high res. Uh, but they were jumping through all kinds of hoops, and it was very fragile, and it frankly prevented me from doing what I think will be more useful. Um, and so that was a casualty. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that's the expanded RAM. Um, and the next one is uh, the external, uh, what I call the external hard drive driver. I've been do using this for a year or two uh, for all my development with the physical machine. Um, so it connects via a serial cable, uh, 230k bytes. So it's basically Apple Talk speed. But I think it's a little faster than Apple Talk because Apple Talk wastes some bandwidth with who should I talk to and what's going on. Uh, we don't have a classroom full of machines. We've got you know one machine and one target, and so it's a simple communication. Um, mounts to 32 meg drives from my my PC over here, or my Mac over here. Uh, the cables are about twenty dollars. It's um, it's one of these USB to serial DB9s, and they're like $3 from Alibaba or whatever, super cheap. And then it's this D, uh, DB9 to DIN8. It's off common called a synthesizer cable. This is a 10 foot one. So you can tell it's not really a problem to have, you don't have to be super short or anything on the cables. Um, seems to be fine to run 230k baud. Um, anyway, so functionality is similar to. Um, 
the serial virtual drive that Holt made or the vir uh, virtual serial drive in ADT. Uh, but of course, it's twice as fast, which is good. Uh, it's about twice as fast as the floppy drives. Uh, and it also is better integrated with the serial ROM in the GS. So pressing reset, and which reinitializes the serial card, doesn't, <coughs> doesn't break the connection. So, uh, so real quick. Um, you like that last one, that red will, uh, oh, oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, let me go back through real quick. Uh, so I've done some experimentation on this. Uh, I, I've manually done it, so I know that it works. But um, so I, I, I can do a little bootstrapping process where, um, where without any drives or anything else on the GS, you can just type in number two, and then the server will, it's, it's kind of spamming out PR number, number twos all the time. So as soon as you say in number two, the PR number two gets accepted by the Apple II, and then the prompt gets prints out for the very next command, and then the server can say, oh, someone's over there, I've got a prompt. And it can download a little, a little transfer kernel, which will then send all of Protoss over 230K uh, at, you know, at high speed, basically. And so we can basically netboot um, a GS without having any drives attached. Um, so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so what I do at my house is, you know, my son has a GS, whenever, whenever I want to do stuff with him, I just have my floppy with, with the external hard drive client on it. I just run over there and I boot that, and then I have my laptop, and suddenly there's my 232 make partitions and all my dev, 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 developer tools, and then I can unplug it, take it away, and I can't break my stuff. So that part's good. Um, but uh, yeah, so I can show this real quick. Uh, so I think soon we're going to need to swap the videos because this has to be on a physical machine. Um, just point at the camera. All right, so um, let's see. It's pretty good and basic. So I've got some little program here and Go here, and to the basic. Now I've got some little programs over here, and you might notice. So when the when the the driver on the GS is running, um, it will show what drive it's accessing. So it was accessing drive one. Uh, actually, I'll kind of slow. We'll, we'll we'll do a directory of the whole disk in order to make partition. To make it work for a while. I thought I was going to make it work hard. There it goes. So every little line in the border is it accessing a block. So it's that's what's transferring the block from over the serial port. And then uh, again, the number it's printed on the text screen is whether it's from drive one or drive two. And then if it writes, there'll be a W up there. What's the server software on the other side of the serial port? Uh, it's just my own. It's like a single source file, really tiny. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that more in, in a minute. Um, so anyway, but the other thing that's cool about this, or that I like, is um, let me get back to basic and back to our little basic thing. So we're over here. I do a lot of development on emulators nowadays, and uh, so it's awfully nice to just leave my emulator open, and uh, I'll just say, and. So we can do that, and then over here, I just did a catalog. We can do. Uh, oh, there I can. My demo, my, my demo uh, coolness may have just given up on me here. Come on, you can do it. Do I have the right? Uh... There it is. So. We can run the thing. Yeah, and then I've also uh, um, had multiple emulators open. So I can have a 2E emulator, and I can have a GS emulator, and I can have a physical machine, you know, a physical GS over here, and all of them are accessing the same file system. Uh, you just don't really want to have all of them writing at the same time. That would be a bad idea. Um, but the, the server code uh, over here is it's just memory mapping the whole uh, 32 meg partition into memory 
And so any writes by any other programs on the server are all consistent with each other. There's no real you know, out-of-date views of things or whatever. Um, it's not really a great idea to be using GSOS uh, with this stuff because GSOS caches all the directory structures. And so it may have an out-of-date view of the world. Where what I say is very simple. It's got real memory. So it doesn't, uh, you know, it always reloads stuff before it does much of anything. Um, all right. So that's kind of the external hard drive uh, driver. That's not out yet, correct? Uh, no. These are all parts of 2.5. This, this is what I've been doing for the last six months. Um, so let's see. Uh, yeah. So that's kind of what's going on there. Um, okay. So now we're moving beyond ProDOS 2.5. This is all, okay, assuming ProDOS 2.5 is cool and, you know, gets out there and people like it, uh, what else might we consider doing? Well, there's the year 2040 program, uh, problem, which really hasn't been on the radar, uh, still 20 plus years away. Um, anyway, the current ProDOS time is two, di is two digits, so we have 100 years, which go from 1940 to, 1930, uh, to 2039. Um, so... An idea I have, I don't know if it's the best idea, certainly open to discussing it with anyone who wants to help try to fix this problem, uh, is to use the top three bits of the hour. So right now there's a byte to hold the hour, and the hour only goes to 24. So we're wasting three bits of the byte uh, for the hour. And so if we top, use those top three bits and extend our year, we can get a 10-bit year, or the year can go to 1,000, which would give us a range of 1940 to 2,940. Um, and would give us, you know, extra 900 years or so. Um, it would require changing apps to use the 10-bit year, uh, which would be a pain. Um, but the date and time remains at four bytes, and usually keeping things in the same space is a lot easier than trying to change apps to make things larger. Um, another thing we could, we could consider doing is adding seconds and milliseconds. Uh, most of the clocks have that information. They just aren't normally stored in ProDOS. So we could go ahead and read them. And even though they wouldn't be stored on the drives, uh, we could at least have them in our B100 page so apps could say, get the time, and then a little bit can do some work and say, get the time, and hey, how many milliseconds have elapsed, or seconds, instead of right now, they have this minutes, uh, which is not very very fun. Um, yeah, so we just need to change the clock drivers to short seconds. That's probably pretty easy to do, because there aren't that many clock drivers. Um, OK, another one is uh, increasing the code space. Um, so Protoss uh, currently has basically 12K of a language card, which works out to be 11K for code and most and, and some data. A big 1K buffer, which is the equivalent of the open file buffer that you have to make with ProDOS. So there's one block that has the where is data on my disk for this file. And then one other block is, you know, is, is a, a data buffer block. Anyway, and then there's also the famous 300 hex bytes for, for the bike program. Anyway, so ideas. Um, <clears throat> You know, one of my kind of ulterior motives with doing that RamWorks driver is, hey, if we get an extra 64K, uh, that'd be a lot more memory than 12K. Uh, there's lots of stuff we could do if we had a whole extra bank. And, you know, the RamWorks may have been hard to come by back in the day, but they're pretty affordable and pretty available nowadays. Um, so that seems like it would be a good thing. Um, and on the GS, of course, we have typically lots of memory, so or at least lots more memory. Uh, it comes with 2D6, so we could uh, use one of the high banks or extra memory there. Other options is we could just swap in code segments. Uh, if someone's got a RAM factor or a syncing memory card, we could try to swap stuff that way. Uh, or from a hard drive. Right now, Protoss assumes that it loads once, it's all in RAM, and you can throw the disk away and it will still work. Uh, whereas pretty much all other modern OSs, for the most part, you boot them up and that boot drive needs to stick around. So um, anyway, so there's some options there. Um, personally, I'd like to see if we could move ProDOS out of the language card altogether because uh, I got my Apple II Plus in 79 and it was cool. We could uh, do lots of fun things with language card and we can't do them anymore and haven't been able to since 83 when ProDOS came out. So that may, may be sad, but you know, that's, that was the way. So, um, so why would we want to move ProDOS out of the language card? Uh, several cool features. One is we could have an you know, integer dot system and it's not just an Apple soft, they're based on system. Um, get our language, our, our WAS basic back, which I'm kind of, a, I think is cool. Uh, we can also make patches. So we could fix bugs, make things faster, change AppleSoft, a lot of stuff that you kind of have to hack around now. You could kind of change more flexibly. You know, interestingly, WAS had that vision. He's like, I'm putting all this stuff in ROM, 
But the language card lets you swap it all out to RAM and do whatever you want. So I, I think it'd be pretty powerful for the community if we could we allow people to do whatever they want instead of locked down to the ROMs that shipped when the machine was made. Um, also, there's a lot of DOS 3 games which required 64K and they were expecting to use that upper language card and uh, you know, Peter's, uh, Kimba's been jumping through all kinds of hoops to try to rearrange those games so that we can leave Protoss up there. Um, so anyway, uh, and there would also, of course, be more, more memory in that first 64K for applications to use. So it would probably be relevant for the guys trying to do the MMOs and stuff, or, you know, the, the, the file-based RPGs, although they're already kind of having to punt out because of this problem uh, you know, to find other solutions. <clears throat> um, if, if you move it out of the language card, where would it go? So, uh, again, uh, to one of the other RamWorks banks. So, two of his RamWorks banks, pick a high one. And so, the other thing is, you have 64K. If you have a whole 64K, we could also go to a driver model, where instead of saying everything has to be bundled in Protoss at boot, even though you're not, you may not use half those drivers, we could go, hey, we started it up, and here's a list of drivers we would like to use. And let's load a driver because we have 64K and we can make that happen. As, as long as we're considering putting it in other places, could it be put into low memory so we could go into Apple III emulation mode? Um, I don't know. What do you mean by? Oh, well, you mean down in the 48K? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I guess so. I, I, I'd have to think about that. Yeah. Like early I mean, versions of ProDOS would load in the lower 48K. Right. You didn't have basic system, but you had ProDOS. Or, or like DOS 3.3 does, where it loads in right. the lower 48K. Exactly. Okay. So, and that would be used for Apple 3 and for Apple 1. Is that the idea? And Apple 2 Plus. Without well, a language card. Oh, sure. Yeah, and Apple II. All right. But, no, that's but Apple three, you don't even have the option of a language card. Okay. So. Yeah, no, so I hadn't even considered that. That's why it's good to get these discussions going, see what we can do. Um, so, yeah. Um, all right, so the next thing. Uh, so this one would be cool. So increase the drive size. So Apple, in 85, released the 2C, and they increased the size of SmartPort. SmartPort was one of the main things it did, is it increased the size of disks from 32 megs to 8 gigabytes. No one ever used it. And then, one year later, they got to GS, and they raised it again to 2 terabytes. So all the machines are able to access 3 or 4 byte block numbers, and Protoss never used it. So Protoss 2, I believe, was... Protoss 2 was largely all about use smart part. And smart part was all about fixing the limitations of the first go around, which were be able to have more than two drives per you know per controller and be able to have more blocks per drive. Um, this one I think would be a big one to, a big boon to the community because 32 megs is a, is a pretty small box to play in nowadays with big storage cards and all of Asimov and 4AM creating hundreds of disks uh, at rapid intervals. So, um, yeah, so to me, this would be a cool thing to do, but it's also not super trivial or easy. Um, but I'll talk about some of the issues. So as far as challenges, um, Protoss would still need to support both the standard 32 meg drive format and the large drives at the same time, I think, because you wouldn't want to convert all of your products over, all of your your drives over to a large format and then not be able to read a floppy, which would be on the, you know, the previous format. So we'd have to support both. Um, and of course, we only have that 11K of memory, which is a problem. Um, so we'd have to make some modifications to the file entry format because um, the, the block index goes from two bytes to four bytes. Um, and of course, applications directly read that file entry format if they want to give you a list of files to uh, select from or whatever. And uh, Protoss has no free, free code space, as we've talked about earlier. Um, so my proposal uh, is to add three bytes to the end of each file entry. So instead of 39 bytes, which is what it's at now, and it always has been, to increase it to 42 bytes, uh, which means instead of 13 file entries in every block, we would only have 12. So we basically, we would give up one file entry and spread those bytes out amongst the other 12 and give us three extra bytes. Um, now, that would be a legal change, according to the Protoss spec, because the Protoss directory format says, we will tell you how many directory entries there should be in a block, and we will tell you how large it is, and you should use that. Um, some programs use that, many do not, uh, so we'd have to fix those. Um, 
So one thing I've done is with my RAM 3 driver, when it initializes the RAM 3 RAMWorks volume, it creates 42-byte directory structure. And so I've been testing that. And I figure if I release this version, or I release version of Protoss 2.5 or whatever, it has a change in it, then the whole community can copy some files into the RAM 3 and then run some programs and see if they work with that volume or not. And it's kind of no harm, no foul, because we aren't going to blow anyone's drive up um, or damage their, their data. Um, there's other possible ways of extending the file system. Um, so this is just, you know, the first shot across the bow, um, but might be interesting to discuss as a community. Um, but again, that 42 byte entry allows us to get up to four gigabytes of uh, files. So if we want to be streaming audio or doing other interesting things, uh, you know, that would be much better than the 16 meg limit that we have now. And then two terabytes of drive, which would hold a whole lot of really old 40 year old software. Um, and uh, interesting, so this design, uh, I haven't moved any of the fields around that, that, that access. I just added three bytes to the bottom. And then there were a number of fields that had housekeeping, housekeeping information that Protoss used. And I've taken those housekeeping things and I've aggregated pairs together. I've moved them down to the end. I kind of had to do some <laughs> shuffle rearranging, but all that housekeeping would be done inside of Protoss and shouldn't really affect the application. So I don't think there would actually be much changing we'd have to do. It's mostly just change, telling the apps that each directory entry is 42 bytes instead of 39, and to only be 12 in a block instead of 13. But I haven't looked at that at all. Again, it's a place where I would welcome contributions if people want to help. Um, so yeah, and then once we can tell that apps are OK with the 42 byte size, then we can do the more the heavy lifting thing, which is to actually go do that rearrangement I, I was talking about, of moving over to a 4 byte uh, block count, and changing the next and previous pointers to be 4 bytes, and letting the byte count and file count uh, go to four bytes and add the uh, larger end of file, which is the four gig file size. Um, and then the real magic here is in changing the way Protoss manages uh, files, which is to use an extents based system. So extents is something you'll see in Linux a lot. There is ext2, 3, and 4 file systems. Uh, and what extents mean is instead of saying, uh, I'm going to tell you where every block is on the disk, which is what Protoss did in 1982, Instead, it says, I'm going to tell you where the first you know, block is on the disk, and I'm going to tell you, use the next 100 blocks. It's basically, it's, 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 a, it's a range uh, specification instead of a one-by-one -one specification. And uh, anyway, using a range system, we could uh, you know, manage to shoehorn into Protoss's memory and existing file structure, uh, I think. But again, anyone who really, really wants to talk about tech det details, if I haven't put you to sleep or whatever, um, find me. Uh, and then. The other issue is that there are some Protoss commands which will need to have an extended form, most notably read block and write block. You know, if we're going to have four bytes of a block number, then having an API, you know, an ML MLI call, which only gets past two bytes, that's not going to fly. So uh, the extension idea I'm thinking of is to, whenever you make a Protoss call, you have a little parameter list. And to sanity check that you're not giving it garbage, there's a count, at the count byte at the start of that parameter list. I'm um, thinking that if we set the high bit on those parameter lists, that will flag that we have an extended call here, and the application knows that it wants to read a block number or write to a block number that is much bigger than one we've ever had before. All right, so um, so next steps. So Protoss 2.5. Uh, I just need to test the NoSoc POC and RAM 3 drivers on lots of apples and configurations. Um, then port my external hard drive server uh, to other machines besides my Mac, unless all people only want the Mac. Um, but I figured the Raspberry Pi would be a nice place to put it, among other, other places. Um, there's some um, external hard drive improvements, like the Netboot thing I talked about, um, which I think would be really cool. Uh, so I don't have to carry a floppy with me whenever I go to my, my son's uh, machine. Um, and then uh, gathering up all the latest utilities into a package, you know, all that time-consuming stuff. Documentation, also time-consuming. Uh, and help with testing or docs or coding would be great. So anyone who uh, is looking for a project or uh, would like to help out, uh, uh, this, is, uh, this is not a small scale endeavor. Or it seems to keep getting bigger on me. I keep thinking I'm just going to do this thing and I'll be done. And the done part isn't happening. So uh, all right. Uh, so what about this future stuff, which has all these cool ideas? How do we get there? Um, so I'm thinking the first step is to just test with the uh, 42 byte directory format, which again, Protoss apps are supposed to abide by, but I'm pretty certain that they don't in the little testing I've already done. Um, and then 
you know, let's get a more comprehensive list of which apps work and which apps break and uh, how hard it is going to be to fix the ones that are broken. Um, so that's something we could do right now. And then just kind of talk about all these crazy ideas. Uh, what do people care about? Uh, who wants to help? Uh, you know, could this get done in our lifetimes? You know, well, what's the deal here? Uh, and then just a general uh, call for contributors. Again, anyone who wants to help. Uh, the scope seems to be well beyond my one-man hobby time uh, now. Uh, so um, help, help would be helpful. Um, yeah, so Summary Cross 2.5 is coming soon. Uh, I thought it was going to be here for Kansas Fest, but uh, I was wrong. And um, so my current target is later this year, maybe the fall, maybe the holidays. I don't know. Um, we'll see. Hopefully, hopefully soon. Um, Apple II has been amazing for 40 years, uh, but WAS allowed us to keep making Apple II better. Uh, we can't change the chips, but the software can evolve. And uh, so let's evolve it. Um, and many hands make light work. At least that's what my parents always told me when I had to do the chores. <laughs> all right, that's all I have. Uh, questions? Yeah. Uh, would it be possible to either integrate or uh, provide a driver for mounting disk images in Code OS 8, like you can with mount it in the DSO? Yes, uh, yeah, I, I, I thought about that too, but it completely escaped me putting the slides together. Yeah, I think that would be super useful to right. be able to yeah. have more of a modern image based paradigm instead of having to. Copy contents of ADT and whatever. Yeah, for sure, that's doable. Well, particularly, well, it's a, it's a code space problem again, right? There's, if, if we can if we can find a way to get out of this code space jail that we've been stuck in, uh, then I think lots of things open. Right. Yes, Chris. Isn't there some problem with using the notes like clock or that would allow to reset the year every seven years or something like that? Does that fix this? Uh, I don't know. So again, I've, I've never been a no-slot clock guy. I've pretty much been a GS yeah. guy. Yeah. So the, 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 the problem with that is that it, uh, it it only has a range of, of seven years, and you actually have to patch the driver to tell it what year you were in. And Apple even did that in subsequent releases. Yeah, another thunder. Yeah, yeah, another actually, thunder talk is that way. Yeah, and, and in fact. Um, like when you install a two server from the Linux command line, it will actually look at the current date and go ahead and patch the Prodos that gets installed in real time. Okay. So, but that just might be a, an artifact of the existing Prodos clock mechanism, and if you're replacing that, then maybe it could just be smart. Okay, well, yeah, testing help would be as needed, I think. Yeah. yeah, in the back. Yeah, that was my understanding that the no slot clock drivers out there were patching the thunder clock mechanism, and because the no slot clock itself, can store like a century or something. Okay. So yeah. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any patching mechanism in any of the no sock clock drivers I looked at, but it certainly is in the Thunder clock drivers. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, and, and if it's going to be for distribution, I, I recommend you run the no the the make no 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 P eight option. Because you won't need the GSOS quit machinery, so it'll save you a K right there. Yes. Uh, how do your proposed extensions to the file system affect the P8 for uh, logic programs on the GS? Um, well, so we would also, yeah, that's a good question. We would also want to modify the Protoss FST part of GS and either release just that FST or release a whole new update of GSOS, probably, um, <clears throat> so that uh, GSOS would be able to access the extended file format. Um, that Protoss 8 was using. Uh, but that should be really easy because the GS has so much more memory and 16 bit code and stuff. I, I wouldn't, I, that should be a, a pretty straightforward engineering effort, I would hope. Yes? Docs on Protoss, is that something that's going to be in 2.5 or is that something similar to Doc Master? Or? Um, well, it's something that the community did. I read about it on the CSA 2. I uh, haven't actually tried it. Uh, but it looked really cool. It got a lot of interest, and I thought it might be appropriate to include in a future OS release so it was more easily accessible to the community. Um, but yeah, if someone wants to look at that and see how it compares to the other versions and you know pros and cons, that would probably be a good idea. I'm not sure how much feedback the author has had, um, but uh, just being able to get DOS on ProDOS seems like it would be of value if we can find a good way to do it. Yes. Um, in terms of how you did this, like, did you? Did you disassemble the binary? Do you have access to the source somehow? Did you, have you yeah, so the, um, 
so in 2015, when I got back into the scene, I found MacGUI, and MacGUI yeah. had a whole bunch of source, the firm, GS firmware and GS OS and all kinds of things. So I just pulled stuff down. Uh, you know, after 20 years, I'm like, oh, there's still a, there's still an Apple II thing, and look at all the stuff people have made and put up and whatever. So um, yes, yeah, so the, the hard part was really recreating. Uh, the build environment that Apple used because they were not using the Apple II, they were using the Macintosh. Um, but luckily, after I did Rastan, I spent the next five years doing Super Nintendo games on the Macintosh using MPW. So I was very familiar with that whole system, and, and I used the 2GS tools um, for all that Super Nintendo work. And so I knew how to set up MPW, and how to set up the tools, and how to set up the memory partitions so the thing wouldn't <laughs> crash and run out of memory, and the, the fragile nature of the Mac system, and all the rest of that stuff. So I was able to kind of set stuff up and get it to work so that I could rebuild from the source uh, kind of the Apple way. I think we have time for one more. Yeah. Actually, it's not much of a question, but it's an addition for you. Mm -hmm. When the time was right, and I think the time is right, you're talking about being able to fix Conference Plus. Mm -hmm. I have the source code. Ah, that would be so helpful. That would be for that great. later this weekend somewhere and get announced and released. Ah. It's 8.4, so it builds the last good version of 8. Cool. All right. That's awesome. Okay. Um, yes. Um, I just looked up a uh, new ship. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Com website. This stuff's not on there, right? Oh no. Yeah. No, that, that's all the. That's all game consulting. Yeah, we're an engineering consulting firm. Right. So yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Do you have a website for all this stuff? No. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. Eight dot com. Right. <laughs> Was that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Ken, I think yeah, Ken, Ken made a website. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, ProtossAid.com and then Call Apple has a post. Yeah. So I should put those in the slides. Call um, Apple. Callapple.org and then Protoss8. Was it dot com? Yes. Good job pulling in a bunch more developers for the project. What's your source code repository model? Yeah, it's it's just on my local machine at the moment, so I don't really have. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we, we should probably just uh, you know IM talk, uh, Twitter email, uh, and kind of figure out how to how to do it as a as a collaboration. Um, Jacob and I just kind of traded files, you know, uh, Gorilla Gorilla way. Um, but um, you know, we it's it also something depends on what are the desi desires of the team, right? So uh, I, I don't really care. I, I, I parachute into all kinds of teams, all kinds of companies, and I just kind of went around go with whatever they like to do, so we could figure it out. All right, I think we're done. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. And, uh, uh, all right, so we're going to have a 15-minute break, and then we're going to have a very exciting session of new product demos um, at 2.30. If you are planning to do a new, sorry, new product announcement, if you're planning to do one of those announcements, please come see me before 2.30 so that we can get the order down, get make sure your computer's going to hook up the projector fast, etc. Okay? Thanks. The end part will have everything, but the Yeah, we're going to talk more explicitly about aggregation, but I forgot to make slides with it. Cool. I was going to talk more to Shane about why we want to get bigger people's volumes. But yeah, that's mostly for you anyway. I
And at that point, all my crap gets destroyed. So you'll be. You'll be after I Okay. All right. I've started this recording and I've started that Okay. So that way I can talk. Um, if it's, I'll mention it to Kevin independently. If they're doing their product announcements up here, but if they move over to there, that the moment that we can all start the process of making the boxes. It's an interesting challenge because it's a kind of a big question. Okay. Uh, it's 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 very interesting. I just told to it to somebody who was going to take it, make it into a game. I can see this as being, I went to just like models and houses that I grew up in. And it's like weird, all the time, just because I can't remember this house. It's not really good, it's a lot of different versions of the house. It's not really good. 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 Oh, that's cool. So your friends who are this story playing it was her new switch. She's never played it in the And she had this horrible experience. So basically, I'll let you run it. If it doesn't run red, it's going to be like this. Yeah. 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 A day ago, she yes. updated it. And she found it. Yes. Oh, okay. She did. Uh, 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 inside. Uh, inside uh, of the point here. But he says that she didn't realize how to take them now. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Or yeah. that there were yeah. more. Yeah. 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 I don't know if it's most of that, but it's, 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 it's as big as you can walk to. You can you can you can never take long enough to walk to the edge of one of those. Yeah. It's like a, a million, one million yeah. your blocks in one direction or the other. And what is good, what's a good idea to do is to um, press it. Well, okay, I can I can do this in line. You find your address of where you're at. Okay. Can you write it down somewhere so that just in case you would wander off and get lost, at least you can find it? Because I've done that before too. I've made something and then I didn't know where I was. And yeah. Save it. It's like, oh, I can't find that now. Oops. Yeah. It was funny though. In this tweet, it doesn't say the word my So people just came along and she said, where, where, where are you lost? You go for a walk and you know where to go. Like, and somebody said, these two things right here. <laughs> I, found my I can explain that all to her about how to handle an underwater temple. I mean, she could probably figure it out herself watching videos on like, yeah, yeah. I figured out a temple and, and got all this stuff. And, and, and I was, and she'll figure it out. It's, it is, it is fun. And it's just repeated. That's all I can say. I would love to get back into the game I think it's going to go to Dragon Quest where there's a very similar right, Minecraft right. Just, 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 yeah, yeah, that was that was kind of interesting how they did it. Right. Yeah. 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 I think since I've never played Minecraft, I didn't really know how to do it. It's uh it's it, it, it's it's different. It has some similarities to large blocks and machines that you can make it. The thing with Minecraft in the past is that it's always been stuff that you wanted to know how to do certain things you had to learn. Lines. Yeah. 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 Y
was that we could they're, they're finally making it within the game of the Lions. How do I make a rental to Amazon? How do I do this? 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 How do I do Yeah, I'm going to place you in order for the Oh, you do? <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to become a bit of a <laughs> 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 Okay, I'll, I'll see you today. So when it expires, I guess the night is short. What is it now? Or is it used to be I think some agent company owns it. Well, it's a short address, which I'm sure is attractive. It's not to make sure it's not a Depending on what deal do you want, like I can get TA.US. Sure. TA.net. We're all in TA.net. Welcome to America. Yeah. Yeah. I love this website. You just submit an order for a domain you want, and it just never publics fails. They'll fit it. Do you have to open the case that you want when it's available? Or that's that's the minimum. That's my basically my bid. So, 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 so you can get the less? No. So that's going to be a. The minimum is 60. Oh, okay, okay. But if somebody else has added this to their list, they put in 100. Dollars. You would, it wouldn't be like eBay where you find out, oh, I've been outbid. Right, right. So it's not proxy bidding. Okay. Whatever you bid is your starting price. Actually, it's your only ad. Yeah, so I'm, I'm waiting for a lot of Well, so sometimes it's like, yeah, it's probably how you got the. Uh, Yeah, exactly. And sometimes I just put in my friends' addresses in case they forget to take you know, Like a friend of mine, uh, she is a. She's actually a Broadway actress and she had her own domain name. So it was her name. And she let it expire. Oh, and so I just snapped it up. And then, like, five years later, she's like, I really want to build a website, but my name is taken. I can't get it back. And I said, Oh, that's because I help. Oh, here you go. Mark, are you hacking again? <laughs> yes. What? Well, not actually for this presentation, but. Oh, you want to go? Is there is there a slot still for the device, or are you? Uh, I I made a reservation for the OK reporter. You can go on. I made a reservation for sixty. You would be seven. Five hundred and fifty dollars. Cool. Yeah. 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 Ye
Perfect. So then you go through your speech. And then I play, I'm sorry, I play. I play for 30 seconds. I play for track team. And then I hand out coupons. Just to send the coupons and people can pass them around. Yeah. And then the last year, we're going to place the album. Yeah. 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 Right. Can you talk about that part? Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I think it was uh, yeah. 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 So I think it was uh, that's a plan. So I, I, I think they probably said that if you're watching the live show, 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 if you're Okay, I've already indicated that we're not going to have that in the light. We have, okay, we have one and a half days. That's going to have some new and fire in the last day. Oh, it's so I think we've been down to the right degree. I wish Andy hadn't gone. He didn't go to the We went out for six days. Exactly. He needs to go to when he's not sick. Of course, the, the new thing was that we kind of we, we sort of paired up. Yeah, and Andy. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so if I can talk to my girlfriend to come, then Andy would be static. Or if she is insistent on not like Disney World, then I can still think. Yeah. Okay, welcome back everybody. So we're going to have... Uh, first product is something that I've been shilling all week um, for David Finnegan. So if I've annoyed you uh, about, hey, uh, you asked for one of these, um, I've probably already got your pre-order and uh, given it to you. But if you had asked beforehand about getting one of these at the show, I think I have two more people on my list. Otherwise, your book may go to someone else who gives me money first. 
Um, this is the new Apple II user's guide by David Finnegan. It is the 40th anniversary edition, so the new cover. But in addition to that, it is the Kansas Fest 2017 limited edition. And there are only 26 of these made with this cover. And that's the last that there will ever be, according to David. Um, so get one while you can and commemorate the 40th anniversary of the Apple II and uh, Kansas Fest 2017. You can see me at the vendor fair. They're $25, and uh, it's quite a tome. So uh, it's, um, let's see here, 774 pages of pure Apple II goodness. Now on to my stuff. Um, first thing that I'm announcing, uh, I already talked about this on Wednesday night, but there weren't a whole lot of people there. This is the battery backpack for the Apple IIc. Oh. It gives you a, a two and a half amp hour um, lead acid battery, 12 volts, uh, charges with a simple brick, um, and plugs into the back of the Apple IIc. I'm sorry, it does not work with the IIc Plus, uh, or anything else for that matter. Um, it sits underneath, it's a nice slim battery, so it sits underneath the handle when it lies on the table, so it's nice and flat. And depending on your use case, it'll give you up to, if, you're, if all you're doing is uh, running basic programs and there's no disk spinning, uh, I've measured it about two and a half hours, two hours, 15 minutes um, in testing, and that's without a monitor or anything attached. So that's the benchmark version of the battery test. It'll give you about an hour with a monitor and regular disk activity. Your mileage may vary. Can you charge Yes, you can charge the battery and use the device at the same time. So that's handy, especially if the battery starts to get low. Um, I'll have these. I have uh, three of these in kit form to sell. And uh, you can see me at the, um, the vendor for those. I haven't got instructions and stuff um, made up for it yet. Thank you, Ken. And uh, I'm hoping to find some people that are handy and are able to do um, some basic construction, but it does not require any soldering. So that's, that was my goal with that. Um, so there it is in action underneath the handle there. Um, I've got some new 3D printed bits and pieces. This is the 2GS display to go with the 2GS Raspberry Pi case. Um, these are actually sold out, but um, you can get those on my Etsy site. And then... Uh, this I have new, new this year. It's a, um, a USB interface for the mouse card or the 2C mouse port. So you can plug a USB mouse into your um, uh, uh, Apple 2C or the 2E with the mouse card. Um, it's usable, but the software is still beta, so I might contact you later on with a new chip or if, you have, uh, if you're handy with an Arduino, um, uh, uh, just a program to flash onto the chip. So be aware that the software might be changing, but like I said, it's, it's usable at this point. It's not perfected. Question. Um, hmm? Will it work with a mouse card in a 2GS? If you have a mouse card in 2GS, it should work. I haven't, got, I haven't tested that specific scenario, but if you're willing to test it, then go right ahead. Um, and the code for this, if you want to help improve the code, uh, is at my um, GitHub site, Option 8, uh, uh, github.com slash Option 8 is all of my stuff. This is specifically under the Retro Connector things. Um, and that is it for new products. Hmm. Uh, thank you, Charles. Next up is Mark Pilgrim, a mystery thing. My friend, Anj Albertini, Th this is actually not my project at all. I, I just promised that I would uh, present it for him uh, in his absence. He could not be here. But my friend, Anj Albertini, has put together a beautiful reimagination of some of 4EM's best write-ups. 
called the 4AM Thology. This is the landing page. Um, it's not easily Googleable yet, um, but presumably that will change. And links to uh, this page, uh, where you can, uh, which is in his uh, GitHub repository, where you can find 41 write-ups um, for uh, individual cracks, and they are all in PDF. They look like this. This one is for Gumball. Um, has a real table of contents, some screenshots, some box art, more screenshots, and so on. Little um, snippets of uh, vectorized, um, <coughs> original vector art that Ange created. Um, Burger Time has a original uh, Reimagination from the box art of uh, vector art that he created, uh, contents, screenshots, little um, icons, and so on, and then you know the actual um, 4am write-up and Ernie's quiz. Similarly, with little Ernie bits poking at you <laughs> during the. <laughs> I just love that. I'm just going to leave that there. Anyway, um, that's it, uh, and, and 38 more. So, uh, 4 a.m. Thology. Just download it? You may get They're all free. Um, PDF, standard PDFs. That he's been testing them in, uh, I believe, a Kindle as some sort of you know dedicated reader. Uh, they work great. Uh, no, no DRM. Uh, no, no, ironically, no copy protection on the PDFs, <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, he, he would prefer that you link, if you're going to talk about it, when I link to this landing page on uh, archive.org, uh, which is just whatever, you can see it there, but it's, the 4 a.m. Thology is the actual part of the URL that uh, changes up there. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Ron, for all of the hard work. All I did was, you know, um, read through and a couple of minor formatting corrections and so on. And thank you to some guy named Florian for the original. Sometimes the riots are better than the crabs. Uh, so I've heard. Okay, so I am next up. I am also uh, presenting a new product announcement for someone other than myself. Um, my good friend, Seth Sternberger, hey. uh, is the co-founder of the uh, well-known chip tune band, 8-Bit Weapon. And we are gonna try to get him on a video call here and see how that goes. And if that fails, I have, uh, I can read the text of what he was gonna tell you. Oh, we need audio. And video. And video. The program needs to dial up. Alright. It's not like you're at the stage. Uh, let's see, why are we not doing that? Talk to you. Hold on, testing one, two, three. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Here's my hold logo. All right, hello everybody. Uh, I wish you'd be there in person to tell you this news. But oh no! Uh, and no. Stop. So I worked with MJ. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Let's see if we can stabilize this. Yeah. Okay.
we moved everything around, of course. Down. Down. Right. This thing? That'd yes. Be the big yeah, that. All right. See if that helps at all. Now you look like hell. <laughs> so far, so good. Give it a shot. All right. So, uh, a few years back, I want to say maybe in 2010, I met MJ Mahone, and he showed me the amazing one-bit sampler that he created for the Apple II. Uh, and then a few years later, I met Charles Magin, uh, that created an amazing MIDI device that would let me control the uh, DMS synthesizer that I uh, helped develop with MJ. So I got to thinking that something that's never been done and surprises me in the world of chip music is that nobody's made an all 100% off the motherboard Apple II album. And so that's what, I, that's what we set out to do. And so now today, each of you get uh, a piece of the album that comes out today. It's called uh, Class Apples, and it's classical music done in a kind of a synth disco style, all done with the Apple II using DMS synthesizer and uh, Charles McGinn's MIDI board, which, by the way, is also coming out next week when we uh, put it out. Looks like this, and you attach it to your Apple II, and it'll let you control with any of your uh, sequencing software your Apple II. You can use it like any MIDI module. So the album is 12 tracks of classical tunes that we've put our own spin on, uh, and five of those tracks each of you get for free as a download. Uh, Martin will give them to you to uh, to enjoy. So yeah, that's the news. Uh, thank you for having me, and uh, thanks. Thank you, thank you. Also, Charles, uh, so we hope to get these out to people in the next two weeks, the MIDI modules, and uh, enjoy the music. Thanks for having us. Thank you, Seth. Thank you, Seth. Um, I'm going to hang up on you now, and I'm going to play uh, a 30-second sample so people can hear what this album is like. Hopefully it will not be too loud. We'll see. Class Apples. That's right. Thank you. Bye, Charles. Do you know what his, is? Is this something that one could like use as a background on a uh, video they put online without uh, getting in trouble with the with him as the copyright owner? Uh, I, I should have left Seth on the call. I say ask Seth. I don't know. Okay, if you could ask him, it'd be nice to know. That was by Charles. The eight bit weapon. What? Eight bit. Weapon. Eight bit weapon. All right. Um, next up, I believe. Uh, I, I just like to wow. add a, 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 a product. Oh. I got an early prototype that, uh, thank you, Charles, of that uh, MIDI DMS uh, box. I used it here briefly at Campus Fest last year to control the drum pad, trigger Apple II drum sounds. It was so fun. It was great. So I'm super excited that the weapon are, are making it available. <coughs> Very cool. Okay. Do we have Javier? Yes. Your turn. Oh. Well, he's sitting on the computer. Oh, sorry. Not for two weeks. Yeah, I'm a needy guy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Would you like me to run and get mine? Well, isn't there one right there? Uh, uh, two E or two E plus. Uh, three. Yeah, sorry. Three. Two E plus. That was not all together, Javier. <laughs> sorry, guys. I wasn't up. Yeah, neither is he. <laughs> that one's not all together. If somebody had like a little program that I could show, what I want to show you guys is the uh, lemon accelerator. I don't have that. Alrighty. Okay. <laughs> so 
Don't copy that. You power it up, I'll have to fix it. Well, if you want to cut down for two, uh, two seconds. Why don't you just talk about the budget? Sure. So, is this going to be quick? I, I wasn't really prepared. I've been showing it around uh, during the days. So, this is Plumman New Accelerator. It's a very nice, uh, hold on, new device. Is this little thing. Um, what it does is you put this in, a, in any slot. Oh, no, okay. I just turned it off, sorry. Any slot on, on the Apple II E. And. Uh, Sorry again. So you just put this on, on any slot of the Apple II, and it will uh, accelerate it. What, what happens is that we'll take over the processor. And I'm not very technical, so you got to project me again. But you know, what it does, it, this is a 65016. Exactly. Uh, with some extra memory included. So what Plamen told me is that what, what it does, it takes whatever it, it's in memory and actually put it in, in its own memory. That way, it, you can actually take the dial and, and move the dial and accelerate up to 16.6 .6 megahertz. And we have shown it around here, and it's very funny because any game, it just begins to go faster and faster and faster. And then you can, you can click on it, and it will pause it. The full computer will just stop it. And then click again and it will run again. Then you can go down all the way to 0.2 megahertz. <laughs> so actually it can go really, really slow. So it, it's really, really nice. Uh, so far I've tested at home with a lot of games and everything runs. Uh, I tested with several cards in there and it runs. So, so far I haven't seen any, any issue. Um, other than that, I just got a word from Plamen and he posted on the 2E group, on, a, on Apple II group, that he just got the, the plaques, so he's starting production. So he will have it pretty soon. How much will it cost? $150 shipped. Wow. Anywhere in the world. <laughs> so there you go. And if you guys want to play with it, just let me know. We connect it to any computer, and you can see it in action. It's amazing. All right, guys. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next up, we have Chris Torrance. All right, uh, hi everybody. So I got a couple different things. Everybody hear me, hopefully? I can turn you up, so okay. don't worry about it. So I'm selling copies of my assembly lines book uh, that was written by Roger Wagner and that I edited. Uh, this is actually the second printing of it. So Roger found a new picture of himself. And if you look really closely, you'll actually recognize this picture. This is the one that was shown the other day with Roger and Steve Wozniak and Bob Flarty. Uh, so that's a new picture on the back cover. And I went ahead and took the opportunity to uh, put in all of the corrections and uh, errata that you guys had sent over the last couple years. Um, and then made some uh, tweaks to the uh, appendices uh, just to clean it up a little bit. So I'll have those for sale. Uh, the uh, K-Fest, I think the mailing list said $15. Uh, they actually cost me $20. So if you're feeling sorry for me, you can give me $20. If you're not feeling sorry, you can just give me $15. Uh, and I'll be happy to autograph it for you if you want. Um, hi, I'm Michael Packard. Uh, wait. <laughs> hi. So Michael Packard actually couldn't be here, unfortunately. He and I were supposed to uh, carpool from Denver, uh, but his wife had to have surgery, so he couldn't make it. Uh, if you don't know, uh, many of you do know, he actually wrote a Apple II game, a brand new game called Alien Downpour. And this was definitely a labor of love for him. He's been working on it for about a year. Uh, it's all hardcore assembly language, uh, very fast, very cool. Um, so obviously I have t-shirts and I have uh, games with either a cassette and a floppy or just the floppy um, and then he also has uh, signs that he makes so these are Apple II forever signs Ooh. and so I'll be selling all of this at the vendor fair everything uh, each item is $20 okay so uh, come and see me during the vendor fair if you want any of that any questions
Okay, and I have uh, large and extra large t-shirts in multiple colors also. Cool. Thanks. Lovely. Uh, next up we have Brian Weiser. Hi everyone. I uh, just forgot to mention during my presentation yesterday uh, with our books, uh, besides the TurtleSoft, uh, DOS 3.3, and ProDOS disk images that are freely downloadable from the books page on TurtleSoft, uh, all the programs that are in What's Where in the Apple and WASPAC, those disks are now online, freely downloadable. Uh, just go to books and the specific book, and it's listed under availability. So just wanted to make sure you knew about that. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, we have we have time definitely. Never tell Ken we have plenty of time. <laughs> <laughs> Not nice. Hey, who who did not go over in their life? You were perfect, actually. Hello. Juice. Juice GS is the seller of the Opus products by the Byteworks. Last month we announced we are now also selling a product called Golden Gate by Kelvin Sherlock, who was at Kansas Fest 2013. This is a compatibility layer that lets you run Orca or Gnome compilers in your Mac, Windows, or Linux environment. So you can compile Apple II programs right from Xcode, for example. So that compatibility layer is available for $10 from our website, and it will be available at the vendor fair as well. Thank you. Any other new product announcements? Oh, oh, question. Go. Does the compatibility layer require uh, the Opus products or Orca? So the compatibility layer works on both Orca and uh, is it pronounced Gnome or Nomi? G N O M E. So it works with either one of those. Uh, so you don't need to have the Opus products. The Golden Gate product from Kelvin Sherlock includes an installer for the Opus products. So if you buy them both, it will automatically install Orca into your Mac or Windows environment, or you can build it yourself in Linux. So you don't need it, but it definitely works better with it, and you can buy them both together. Well, what's that, Jeremy? Jeremy might actually know that product better than I do. So, thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, next up we have Jay. Thanks. I have. I just have a giveaway here at the end. I, everybody. Uh, Everybody wanted one of these, it looked like, one of the IC straighteners, so I have one of them to give away, and we're going to have a little contest here. So, somebody will have to tell me what this tool is. It was a specialized tool, and that's the only hint I'm going to give you. No, <laughs> not that tool. Let's see if I can put it on there. Okay. Let me go sideways here. I don't know if there's a better better light. No, that was good. That was great. The Max case opener. Hey, got it. <laughs> get it. He got it. Who was that? Charles. Okay. <laughs> Charles got it right away. Charles, you win the IC straight, pin straight. Yeah. So, just, to, just to show you how that works, there, there, was, um, there was actually a Torx, a long Torx driver with this, and that, that goes into a screwdriver, and then that's how you took the screws off, and then you would actually put this in there, you would wedge it in between the case, and you would work it around the case, and it would pop it right off. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Jay. Uh, any other new product announcements? Hearing none, uh, it is time for us to embark on the disassembly of this room.
Uh, the, we're going to have a 15 minute break between now and the exhibition <laughs> hall slash vendor fair. Um, I think we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do, but I think most of the chairs are going to get folded up. The tables are going to get moved. Uh, the lights are going to get on and all kinds of stuff's going to happen. So, uh, then we'll have that, the exhibition hall and vendor fair. If you have stuff to give away or sell, bring it down. If you have stuff to show off, bring it down. <laughs> No worries. I mean, it's just, it's just nice to have it. It wasn't Mr. Hayes. Mr. Martin Hayes. 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 A lot of help from a lot of people. I'd like to thank Mike. I'd like to thank the staff of Kansas Fest who worked hard to get us the network, even though it turned out to be shit in a bag. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody at Kansas Fest for making it so much fun, and to all the speakers, none of whom objected to a live, unmoderated connection to the internet during their presentations. We're going to be splitting this place up now into the vendor. Hope to see you here next year, or see you on here next year. Again, my name's Jason. Uh, you can reach me at textfiles uh, or on, on Twitter, or jason at textfiles.com, or, or by shouting out your window, because that'll be as effective as the network here at Kansas Fest. Talk to you later. Woo! Do you need the tape to take off the tables and the wins? Yeah, the last, the last, the power cord. We may want to leave the power cords running around just so people can power their yeah, yeah, But the last is going to be picked all to the side. Or even better, all on that end of the room, so I can take them to the thrift store. Yeah. 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 Yeah.